welcome to The Late Show. Uh, I hope that, that I can live up to such a fantastic introduction. Um, but I'm delighted to be here with Sir J. Popov, famous violinist and uh, minister. Uh, uh, Sir J., we, um, many of our viewers were at the Royal Albert Hall and heard your amazing uh, performance, very moving performance. Um, uh, especially the, the, the theme from Schindler's List. How was it for you being on the stage with three and a half thousand people watching you? You know, the music is a very interesting thing. Um, in, my, in my career, I certainly understand one thing, that a lot of musicians can play, but not so many can have something to say. Because music actually is language. And you not only just have to show your skills, you have to send a message. And this is, was a great opportunity, by the way, when we were staying before the big crowd of people. Always I think about not just impress or do something. It's very good that after you play or do, do something that people start to think. Mm -hmm. Because actually it's language. And we use language to, to just to broadcast our information. That's right. Music is the same. And by the way, if uh, we usually get information and transform it through the brain, and then we decide with our heart, is it you like it or not? So music is opposite, it's coming directly to your heart. Yes. And sometimes people start to cry in the concert on because it's music touch hearts people, mm -hmm. so it's easy to transform or to, to talk with people through and, the music. And, and we're created in God's image. You know, the creativity of God is, is there imprinted on, on us. And, and music is, is evidence, really, that we're not animals. Because, you know, to be able to create, let's say, the works of Mozart, it, it, it's something that's beyond just some, you know, chance mutation from an amorphous soup. The music, I think, is a line between uh, a world which we can, uh, we can see and a world, uh, a world which is unseen world. So it's a border, because mm, you cannot uh, explain it or try to touch music. Mm -hmm. It's something mm -hmm. which is, you, if you record it, you can see it's on DVD or CD in digital way, but in any way, it's a sound. It's something which is not in from material world. But grounding it, or uh, as it were, let, linking it to heaven rather than yeah. to earth. You know, what is it as a, as a believer for you that, that, that adds something? Because you can just talk about music and make music yes. the entity, but there's something deeper. Uh, I, I think that uh, in the, basically when God creates the world, music was surround all creation. Wow. Uh, because, it's, you know, devil was a worship leader. And actually what we can do for the Lord is worship Him and praising Him. And music is one of the tools. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, we not pay attention, but uh, when you start service, when you make a worship music before the people, it's open way, open heart of, the, of people, yeah. you know. So music, it's not just limited, some kind of different sounds which has pleased people or not pleased. It's a, a tools of, of worship. It's tools to open the door for angel, mm -hmm. if he wants to. Mm -hmm. if, if so um, do you, when, when you're playing, do you, uh, are you very conscious that you, you know, it's worship to the Lord, or are you presenting to the people? What, what, what is actually going on? <laughs> this is a good question. You know, uh, this is a problem, because you, uh, on this world, you face people, face, presence of society, whatever. But everything what you do, even play the violin or even you are just in your ordinary life, you have to think about please the Lord. Mm -hmm. Please not people. So for example, in my, um, specific in my uh, area of musician, when I come to the platform, I just try to do it for, before the Lord, my best job. Yes. And uh, for example, sometimes you have to choose what you will play. And you definitely think that if you play some pieces which people will like, but you put opposite. Because you, you feel that you need to give the food for thinking or something that uh, people will be 
shocked, stop. Even in the middle of uh, like joyful moment, because our life it's um, it's a contrast day and night. So and music and worship it's reflected our relationship with God. So first of all, it's I've uh, like a worshiper. I have a responsibility to use this moment, this time, which God gave me, to lift up the audience or atmosphere up to the throne of God. There's, there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says that God has um, sown eternity into the heart of man. Do you, do you feel that you're, um, do, you, do you sense eternity, you know, while you're playing? <laughs> Of course, I think that um, we all have to work for eternity, <coughs> just in ordinary life. If you, um, every, any kind of job, you are a doctor. If you work for the money or just for your prestige or something, you already, I think, uh, will be in conflict with God. God wants us always thinking about s something beyond yeah. understanding. So it's mean music, of course. When you play, you, you want to um, be a part of something bigger than when you see. If you want to uh, please people or, s uh, or make a show that, uh, look, I will, now I will show you how I'm skillful, can play violin or whatever, I'm a wonderful singer and I have a beautiful voice, you are bankrupt. Yeah. It's maybe not shown immediately, but it's only time. Once you think that success, what you have, belongs to you, it's the beginning of your end. Yeah. Every time what you're doing, but we start with doctors, with the scientists. You think you do for the glory of the Lord. You do for Him. So it's everything belongs to Him. And for example, you, a lot of people think that I'm um, gifted people, not me. I mean, about yes. themselves. Yes. Oh, you know, I'm very great painters or actors or lawyer, I, a gifted person. But you have to remember that gifted, it means that somebody gave you a gift. And this gift not belong to you. Wonderful. So uh, in, mu in uh, music area or art, it's v s s uh, very special because um, your profession, it's you. Yeah. You know, so it's not a result, it's here. And sometimes people have a temptation to grab it and say, it's mine. Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful voice, I'm a singer. And it's my voice, no. Mm -hmm. You know, this is belong to God. And this with kind of attitude. Just reminds me of, of Moses throwing down his rod, <laughs> you know? If you, if, if you hold on to it, yes. you put your hand in your tunic and you discover that you're leprous, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but you throw down that rod and then take it up from the tail in God's strength. It can be a great instrument for his glory. It's, it, this is a system of life. If you think yourself a part of something <clears throat> more bigger, or you just close on your, on, on your own kingdom. So it's me, it's for me, and you know, so uh, it's, it's a way to be bankrupt. Yeah. It's only a question of time. Yeah. Now, Sergio, you, d you don't only play other people's music, you, you compose. Yes, I uh, do. Just compose. tell me, it's probably, we're going to be repeating what we've just said, but the process, you know, from a blank sheet of paper to writing a music score, how, how does that happen? Uh, you, you know, uh, I would like to put some my music, which I, I heard in, in the night. <laughs> Okay. In the morning, I wake up and I try to remember it. And it was early in the morning, I just put in the paper. Yeah. And you, if you could, can put yeah. some of my tracks. I would love and, to. Uh, I yes. think it would be fantastic. So there, there was one, um, just uh, introduce it for us. You can introduce yes. it to the camera and our uh, folks. Uh, you know, uh, my, uh, suddenly I have seen the great throne. And uh, my question is that uh, one day, all of us, you want it or not, but you see the face of God. Yeah. So it's a, it's a crucial moment. The people forgot about that. Mm. Everything what you do, it's a way to remember that one day you see Him, what you will tell Him. And it's called On That Day. On That Day. On That Day. Thank you. Let's listen. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, His glory above the heavens. Who 
is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the Ark of the Covenant. There came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a great hailstorm. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool and the hard rock into springs of water. city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you. We're just coming back out from this wonderful performance. Uh, Sergei, the, those words that were read over the, the music were the words you had in mind when you composed the music. Yes, exactly. And uh, I was just uh, 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 clear, uh, uh, see this word from the Bible. And then I just, it's so easy after the, you, you see the, all the picture. Just a lot of people would sit with a pencil waiting for the inspiration. No, but you've got the scriptures there in Inspiration your coming to you. And again, the question is, I'm all, all belong to God. And I always said, God, use me in this. For example, what you gave me, talent or whatever, it's yours. So God, you know, if you will pray, Please, God, use me. It's not mean that in music or in any art, everywhere. Absolutely. Absolutely, areas of your um, um, to be used by God. It's so wide. You come to the wor words oh, to work, and said, God, use me today. Yeah. And definitely, you will find the person who will need your advice, yeah. who will need your. Uh, 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 yeah. But problem is that we sometimes not wait right moment, right time yeah. to say. I always uh, love them one example. You do know how uh, eagle hunted? Yeah. Hunt. He flying 
and then he sees the subject or goal of his attack. Yeah. But he wait until the wind go blow down. Mm. Otherwise, if it's wind will be against him, he can lose uh, this. Uh, uh, exactly. uh, he can lose the speed or something, and he can break his leg. So he wait that wind blow down. Amazing. And this is, you can see sometimes a great, great picture of eagle, he's flying, and he's watching, but he's waiting for his time. Yeah. That's and his it's, uh, the wind is a wonderful picture of the spirit the as spirit. well. Exactly. And we, we talk about inspiration, I started my question with that, which is really breathing in God's spirit. Exactly. You're being inspired by the spirit of God. It's exactly, if you have to wait, to learn how to wait, yeah. Because it's not that I prayed tonight and the next morning I get uh, music. Yeah. Just it's a process. Yeah. You know. And we, by the way, the, the flip side of inspiration is aspiration, <laughs> which a lot of people think, well, it's all selfish and it's my career. But if you a true aspiration is breathing out in worship to God. Yes. And all our life, it should be orientated yeah. daily yeah. on just. Do I am on right path? Yeah. Do I am on on same wind yeah. stream? Could I just ask that, that, that there, are, there are many folks watching who wouldn't come from the Christian position? It's a public broadcast. Uh, so the words that came out in that beautiful um, uh, what we call B-roll um, sequence with your music behind, they were powerfully pointing to a world view that is based on God creating us. As you know, there's, a, there's another worldview that says that we came out of nothing, <laughs> from no purpose to no purpose. <laughs> you know, what can you say to people who come from that persuasion? How, how could you just uh, impart to them a message? Uh, you know, I use my concert sometimes to prove that God exists and use it. And uh, many times on my concert, people coming just to listen violin because it's announced like a violin concerto. And I talk during my talking about my music or my inspiration. And the one, once it was in my concert, I don't remember place, but the person said, what are you talking about if we all know that uh, we have here people who has no f face and not believe in God existence? And we're not believers and you just bring us information. And uh, from point of view of believers, and I told uh, this person, uh, just during the whole concert hall, I said, you know, you are more believer than I do. Mm. He said, well, what do you mean? I said, you know, to believe that we are, we are created from, from the nothing, from monkey, yeah. to, to believe is such stupid things. You have to have a, such a great face to believe in such yeah. nonsense. Because um, the um, evidence of God's existence much more than evidence of that we, uh, we are coming from nothing. I mean, I'm just looking at the light in your eyes. You know, the eyes alone, the it, miracle of it, how the, the light, you know, signals come through and get converted so that we can actually see People who, said, is a miracle. people who said that uh, I'm atheist, yeah. he really not atheist, he just, if you allowed me for yeah. my yeah. Um, English, is not my mother's tongue, so is believe in garbage, I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> and, but he believe in something. Yes. You cannot believe in nothing. So uh, sometimes I think that uh, people leave, how, what do they believe? The same style of life they have. Mm. If you believe in Mickey Mouse, you live like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. If, because they said, I don't believe, but if Mickey Mouse in your life 10 hours a day, That's so it. it's, it's, yeah. it's a fact that you believe because you almost worship. If you, uh, you know... Uh, I mean, the tragedy is, as it says in Romans 1, although they claimed to be wise, they became foolish. Absolutely. Worshipped and served created things. We believe in God of everything, mm -hmm. God of eternity. Yeah. So in your, your life, in, even in the hope what you have, it's, it's uh, lifted up your level of your just existence on this earth. Now, there's another, uh, the, the title in that day. Just please explain. What, are you talking about paradise? In what day are you referring uh, and, and to? I just think that 
in, in when we're talking about my piece at the day, I just we, it's about our, our imagination. Mm. But the fact is, like a child of God, like a create uh, like creation of God, it's a only question again of time. But once we will see His face. We will see, and you know, what's my, we, you're not talking about consequence, but just on the moment, everybody who have a very short life on this earth, you know that our life is only 30,000 days. So you have to remember every day that one day, at the end of the 30,000 30, days, it's 80 years, you know, it's if, yeah. if you're good at good health. Yeah. It's come time that you have to see face of God. So. I think this meeting is, um, it was already set up yeah. in each of us. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't just want to, to t take your time and make a consequence that you will go to paradise or hell. It's a different yeah. story. The story is you have to remember what you use with everything what you, God gave you, with your health, with your talent, with your money, with, with your family, because God gave us. You know, gave you also for many Christians, they gave a revelation, but revelation always coming with responsibility. Yeah. So what you do, because it's responsibility, with all this 30,000 days, wow. it's very short. Yeah, it's very short. And, and if one doesn't have a belief in the resurrection, it, it's, a, it's a miserable life. Of course. Not to have a purpose uh, beyond. Uh, you, you think, well, why should we even have this interview? Why should you play any concerts? If, if, if the whole universe is heading towards a heat death and there's no, you know, there's no purpose or destiny, it, it's the tragedy, really. And uh, actually, uh, tragedy is that uh, with this kind of mindset, when this, that's it, our life, it's just, ex for me, exists only these 30 days. And so it's come to the very selfish, very limited life. And finally, it leads people to great tragedy. Yeah. You know, when you do, I very often play in America, and sometimes you see this line of, you know, uh, family line of something where you can drive or more than two people. And you see a lot of people staying in the line on the highway. They want to be alone. Tragedy. Yes. And you know, I drive always with somebody who would bring me yes. to concert. And I said, why are they staying here? Because they said, you know, in America, you have a two cars from family and husband and wife wants to drive separate cars. It's nuts. It's, it's nuts. It's and nuts. And you know, and you talk with this person, all of them have a same, same problem. Okay, Sergey, um, we're going to, just to explain to the viewers, we're, we're going to um, play another piece, which yes. I'd like you to introduce again. And then we'll, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk to Paul O. Higgins. So yep. this is a variety show. And this is a piece and called I Believe. Oh, that doesn't need any introduction. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. So we're going to play that in. Uh, firstly, to say great honor to have Sergei uh, pop off with us on the, the Late Show. Not to build you up, but just to say all glory Amen. to the one who, who, who gave us life but gave us our giftings as well. Thank And you very light. much. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Sergio. Thank you. Bless you.
מאמין באמונה שלמה בביאת המשיח. How wonderful, isn't it wonderful? Oh, it's so special. It, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and, and to be in his presence. Uh, wonderful from, to have Sergei and this, I believe in God, the creator, the redeemer, in the Holy Spirit. That's a pretty good a place to begin. It's a wonderful pleasure, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that's a good introduction to Paul O'Higgins. Absolutely, Tim. Good to be here. Thank you so much. And, you know, we're basically here because Abraham looked up at the stars 4,000 years ago and believed in the God who created it all and that through faith he would become the father of many nations. Absolutely. We were in Israel a few weeks ago and we said we're here because of two people, Abraham and Yeshua, Abraham and Jesus. Wow. Just want to go there, we, we spoke about <coughs> the creed, I believe yes. in God the Father. Yes. We say that in the churches, I believe in God the Father and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Virgin Mary. Yeah. I said to someone recently, what's wrong with that picture? Hmm. We've been well, saying I, it for 1,500 years. I'm not years. here to answer questions, yes. so I'm going to <laughs> I'll allow that to be rhetorical. Well, we, exactly, <laughs> rabbinic teaching, you know. Yes, because, yes. And um, because something happened between the creation and Mary, yeah. and in our historic Christian faith, we left a huge gap, yeah. because in between the creation and Mary is the call of Abraham and there's Noah and yes. the, the coming of the children of Israel out of Egypt. And there was God releasing four major covenants with yeah. the Jewish people for yeah. the sake of all mankind. Right, that's, that's, and, that, that's almost, you can't, uh, uh, you know, it's so easy to gloss over. Uh, yes. Um, but that's, that's quite a powerful, we're talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth making four covenants with man through the Jewish people, on behalf through of all Jewish mankind. People. Okay. And that's what our Christian faith swings off, yes, hinges that's right. off. That's right. And so just, just before we, so we'll tee this up, just, um, you know, that at the beginning, man fell away through rebellion yes. and through an independent spirit from exactly. relationship with God. Exactly. So in the cloud of darkness, God breaks in yes. and reveals himself. Yes. And uh, he reveals himself through Abraham and through the Jewish people. Yes. So over to you, and Paul. As Sergei was talking about this, uh, this abandonment from God, this atheism, the yeah. sadness of it. Mm -hmm. And of course, atheism is simply refusing God's help. And this is what Adam did. He didn't deny the existence of God, but he just went an independent life. We'll see, can we manage our life without God's help? Mm -hmm. 
And that's the tragic of the humanists today. It's not that they don't believe in God. It's not that they're not intelligent. It's not that they don't work hard. It's not that they're not nice people. It's just they refuse the help of the greatest source of help of all and of love of all. And Jesus came to connect us back with this huge, immense, vast, Niagara's flow of love and of help and of mercy. And for people to live their life independently of that huge, vast resource is tragic. It's absolutely tragic. And so, so, we, so we are believers, we have faith in God's word, and you're going to talk about four covenants yes. in God's word. When I had opened, my eyes were opened to those four great covenants, it was such a revelation. See, even our Christian faith swings off this covenant with Abram. And you have, we have this problem in Christianity today. It was addressed at that Balfour event. Yeah. The idea that God is finished with Israel, that his, his covenant is now with the Christian people and the Jewish people missed the boat and it's now with us. But God made a covenant with Abram to bless him and through him to bless all nations. So there is the, the lie about racism mm. being involved with the Abrahamic covenant because it's a plan through Israel to bless all nations. Mm. So it's for the sake of all nations. Then he plum promised him land, specific land. God can do that because the earth belongs to him and he gave them specific dimensions for the land. Then he promised him descendants. So it's a promise of blessing, descendants, land. And here is the key thing. In Genesis 17, he tells us that this covenant is everlasting. That means it's operative on the earth today. And Paul takes this up. He says that he, Jesus, when he came, he came to confirm. It says this in Romans chapter 15, verse 8, to confirm the covenants, the promises made to the patriarchs, not to do away with them. And the tragedy of much Christian theology today, even in evangelical churches, Bible-based churches rather than tradition-based churches, they still ignore this incredible reality that Jesus the Messiah came to confirm the promises given to the fathers. So the promises given to Abram, they're in operation today. But we know the history of Israel. They disobeyed and they, God had promised punishment for disobedience that they would be exiled. But the exile was always mentioned by the prophets as a temporary matter. And I love this in Jeremiah 31. It says the same same chapter that speaks about the new covenant, he who scatters Israel will gather him and shepherd them as a shepherd does his flock. So most people will agree in Britain, in Europe, yeah. they'll agree that, well, God scattered the Jewish people. Yeah. But if they believe that, they must also believe that if God scattered them, he will he's, them, he'll bring them back. So we've gone, so, um, so we're really talking about the covenants to Abraham, the four aspects of well, it. Well, no, they're, they, okay. they're four interconnected covenants. Okay. God made a covenant with Abram That's when right. he was 75 years old. That's right. 430 years later, yeah. he made a covenant with the children of Israel through Moses on yeah. Mount Sinai. This covenant was a covenant of blessing and curses. Yeah. And one of the curses was if they didn't obey perfectly all God's wonderful yeah. ordinances, they would be exiled from the so land. So can I interject the... Um, uh, we were talking with Sergei earlier about the gifts. Yes. And something that folks may think, oh, well, there's some progression of, of a giving and taking away, let's say. But in Romans, it says the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. That nails it's it, doesn't it? It's a wonderful thought when you think of Sergei playing the violin. He, he doesn't take it but, back. But he doesn't take it back. Yes. And so you, you mentioned everlasting. Yes. That's, uh, that, that's, that, that's something, because we live in a world what, what, which, where people say, oh, well, it's progressive. So we're, we're, we're learning, we're advancing in our well, knowledge and understanding. Of course we're learning, and the Holy Spirit is leading us into all truth. But what we're actually saying is, of course, there's a progression of our revelation, yes. but, but not a sort of e evolution of God's promises. They, they are pretty well fixed. That's when he exactly says it. right, but our discovery of yeah. the package that God has given, yeah. and the story of Christianity is a story of remembering and forgetting. Yeah. At, the, at communion, we remember, but we also have forgotten. Yeah. We forgot God's plan for Israel. We forgot that it was everlasting. We got arrogant towards the Jewish people. Yeah. So that, if I inter interrupted you. So the second The uh, second covenant, covenant that yeah. God made came We've 430. just about got enough time, You're by very the way, good. for four. Before, so let's and go. the third was the yeah. covenant he, he made with uh, uh, 
the promise through Jeremiah and Ezekiel. He said, I'll make a new covenant which will solve the problem created by man's sinfulness. Mm -hmm. And he, this, he solves the problem by promising eternal, permanent atonement in the new covenant. Everybody shall know God. And thirdly, I'll put my laws in their minds and in their hearts. And Ezekiel says, I'll get, take out the heart of stone and I'll put my spirit within them. Within Judaism, there was a problem created by the a dynamic between the Abrahamic covenant of promise and the Sinai covenant of, of curse for disobedience. And God solves the problem by providing Jesus to take the curse for the whole people. And then also by giving them inner righteousness through the gift of the Holy Spirit. That was promised first to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So the, it was so that the covenant of Abram could be fulfilled because they lost their land because of disobedience on a temporary basis. Now he puts his spirit within them and causes them to walk in their ways. It's interesting in Jeremiah, uh, some folk when they think of new covenant, they don't think of Israel, they think of of the Gentiles and, yes. and the world church. And we but, get grafted but, in. But uh, Jeremiah does say, I, I have made a covenant, a new covenant with the house, house of Israel. And the house of Judah. Yes. And we're told that when they come back from all the nations, there God will pour clean water upon them and he'll put his spirit within them and that will be life from the dead. Yeah. Now the fourth covenant is the covenant God made with David. And the covenant that he, the, of the increase of his government there would be no end and that he would occupy the throne of David not before the Jewish people were scattered because we see this in Ezekiel but after he brings them back from all the nations so this present regathering of Israel isn't just a benchmark of history it's it's all moving to the climax of history when there'll be a whole new world order under the leadership of the Messiah Wonderful. Jesus is coming and so when he was ascending this the disciples said aren't you forgetting something Jesus the covenant with David and Mary, when she received the message that she was to be the mother of the Messiah, she had a big praise out party yeah. that God has remembered his covenant with Abram and he's raised up a leader in the house of David. Yeah. So we Christians should be absolutely excited with yeah. the covenant with Abram. God's remembering it. Yeah. And Jesus is the champion, both for the Abrahamic covenant and he's the one who occupies the throne of David. So we love... <laughs> Christianity lost its context yeah. and we began to float out in an orbit out there separated from Israel and that's been remedied today. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, now Paul I have to say and to the viewers I've, I've never had a, a program where we've had such a great introduction to a guest <laughs> but I haven't actually said who Paul O'Higgins is but they, I, I love to just launch as we do in our Bible studies just launch straight into the scriptures and we've been doing it for 14 years now. Um, Paul, who is Paul O'Higgins and how did you come to, to be teaching in such depth? You know, where, where, where does your, your journey with the Lord and the scriptures begin? Well, I'm, I'm a friend of Jesus, a follower of oh, Jesus. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but I received my call to follow him when I was a teenager in Ireland. People yeah. recognise the distinctive Irish yeah, accent. Yeah, <laughs> and though I live in America, I and this was a, a, a Ireland, Republic yes, of Ireland. and I received a very profound call to follow him. And By the way, we don't need it in your voice, it was in your name. So <laughs> when I said O'Higgins, you know, and, as a So, uh, well, being Catholic, yeah. in, in, in predominantly 97% Catholic, yeah. following Jesus for me at the time meant becoming a Catholic priest. I went to the seminary, determined to become a perfect person. Oh, and on, on the way, I began, to get, I began to read the stories of people who were receiving baptism in the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the power of Jesus to live the Christian life. And I knew that I had been trying to live the Christian life on my own energy yeah. without the help and power of the Holy Spirit. So Now, this, this, this is interesting because, so, you know, the Catholic Church had, uh, you know, the, the dogma, as it were, concerning the, the wandering Jew. Which, which went right up to Vatican II, where there, there really wasn't a, a sort of a papal recognition of the role of the Jewish people. I know it was it Pope John the Twenty Second. Yes, they're trying to remedy it. And they very, tried to remedy it. A very tragic history. But you mentioned it is a tragic history, but just positively, there was this recognition of Israel as the older brother. Yes. But you mentioned in your first covenant um, the, the land. Yes. when you were talking about land and yeah. I, I noticed what years ago when I read about this new catechism or however it is uh, that they didn't really acknowledge the promises concerning the land 
This they, is pro the key. they made promises concerning the people, you know, understandable, but not the land. Yes, I believe in Jewish dialogue. Yeah. They should really contend for this. Yeah. Of course, now the truth led me free from Catholic tradition, and I serve now in, in an interdenominational teaching ministry. My wife and I work as a team together. Okay. And I, I taught for several years in the Catholic Church. Now, your church. wife used to be a nun, so you're a Catholic priest. Yes. And your wife is a, is a nun who it, married it, it, a, a celibate say, priest. Yes. <laughs> well, you okay. see, the truth sets you free because yeah. you realize yeah. that traditions that ha aren't in the scripture yeah. are not binding. Jesus said you make void the word of God by your tradition. So any tradition that doesn't fit in with the word of God isn't binding to any, any believer. I don't believe anyway. So that um, did you get chucked out? I did really. <laughs> I got chucked out. I, I mean, it's, yeah, it's it pretty. Was, it was an honour to be chucked out, really. Okay. And um, but I, I, I had doors in the Catholic Church. Yeah. I still have doors in the Catholic mm. Church because we walk in love. Mm. But um, the, I, my teaching was very, had become very, Bible centred, yeah. and I wasn't able to teach people do the, some of the Catholic traditions like praying to Mary. Mm. So I had a wonderful bishop. He's, he liked what I was doing. He said, what Paul is into, that's the future. But then he died and a new bishop came along and said, examine my doctrine. He said, you're teaching justification by faith. You're teaching new birth. You're not teaching Catholic traditions. I said, I'm sorry, I'm not able to teach them anymore. Yeah. So he said, I forbid you to preach or teach. There you are. So I always say, thank God for him. You and, know. and your discovery of the scriptures concerning Israel, where, um, was that while you were a Catholic priest? No, that came a little later when I visited Israel. And um, I actually, when I went to the Feast of Tabernacles conferences back in around wow. 81, wow. and just to see... So that's a long time ago. It's a long I, time I ago. my dad attended yes. that one. <laughs> And we're yeah. discovering mm -hmm. all the time. And Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth and show you things to come. Things, we've been looking at them, but we never quite saw them because he shows us the things that have been freely given to us by God and our eyes don't see them by mere intellectual study. The Holy Spirit has to show us these things. They're there in plain sight in the scriptures, mm. but we miss them, we overlook them. The, 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 the great distinction between the Roman Catholic Church of, of history and let's say our evangelical position is, is that we elevate the word of God yes. higher than, than the word of church well, leadership. Every, every Christian. Whereas the Roman test. Catholic Church would say, well, the, 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 Rome, the, the actual church is, is the vehicle and, and therefore you can have, let's say, a papal edict which can supersede or can actually which have more course, authority than the scriptures. Which is ridiculous because... I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not defending it, well, I'm just I, I, opposing the because, point. Yeah. Because Jesus, is, Jesus wasn't afraid to uh, call a spade a spade. He said to some people, they made void the word of God by their tradition. And there are some in traditional Christianity who make void the word of God and they put the tradition above the word of God. Not everybody in historical Christianity is like that. And it's that. not exclusive to the Roman Catholic Church. No, I mean, it certainly in, isn't. in the charismatic movement, exactly. there's we the can, danger of being super. Yeah, you know. we, we can put a tradition or a, or a philosophy or a theology above the scripture. And everyone needs to come against the plumb line of the word and the plumb line of the spirit. So and we um, all need to test ourselves against the word for, of God. For but me, Paul, the, um, the, the scripture in Romans 3 that says, so that you may be proved right when you speak yes. and prevail when you judge is, is critical because um, having a God's word written down, it, it means, and, as, and proved now with the Dead Sea Scrolls as an example, that it was written down beforehand, Isaiah 42. Yes. You can prove that God's word is true. Okay. But if it's just spoken, it's very difficult to actually verify. But now that we have, you know, that God's spoken his promises concerning Israel, his covenants for, for everlasting. If, if you're yeah. the enemy of God, you'd, and, and that was written down. Yes, um, you tried you, to wriggle out. You would try and wriggle out. You try and actually disprove and God's so word. And so one of the th good things that came from the Reformation was that the standard of the word of God became the plumb line. And it's to be fair to Catholic tradition, they're doing their best to try and correct some traditions against the plumb line of the word of God. But you can do that immediately. Any believer who comes to the Lord reads the scriptures and says, well, if something is not in the teachings of Jesus, it's not binding. 
And so we need to follow him and follow his spirit. So for me, these last decades following the Lord, his word and his spirit has been such an adventure. Yeah. Jesus is our immediate and direct leader. And we get help from the whole body of Christ and advice and counsel. So it's an amazing reality to everyone to, say, to hear the voice of Jesus saying, follow me. He never said, follow a man. He said, follow me. And in following him, we get to meet all his friends. Mm -hmm. We get counsel from his friends, strengthened from, by his friends, and tested by his friends. But this wonderful thing, the, the listeners and viewers here, many of them, the, the Lord is right, speaking to their hearts right now, saying, will you follow me? Will you discover the adventure of following me? Not just your own small plan for your life, but the eternal God loves you with all his love. Mm -hmm. And he's inviting you to become a person of significance. Follow yeah. me, that make you something significant out of your life, yeah. which you could never make by yourself, of yourself. And, and you, the, the wonderful thing about the scriptures is, is we're not just living uh, the dead letter of the law. Absolutely. It, it's, it, it, it's a word and spirit, as it were. Coming together and, and in a wonderful life. blend. And, and I'm I trying to, th you know, bearing in mind that we had Sergio with this wonderful expression of God's creativity and, and spirituality. Um, ha ha looking at, let's say, the Protestant church today, do, do you feel that some have gone? I, I, I not, don't speak as a former Catholic, but just, yes. do, do you know that that's, I don't the, have any, the, the I, word has become a little bit dead and dry? Absolutely. And we have to bring it back the, to life. The plumb line of the Word of God and the apostolic teaching. See, we ha are we teaching the same message, uh, identical words, but the same message as those first people who came out of the word, of, out of the upper room with the word of God ringing in their ears and burning in their hearts that Jesus has done enough for the sins of the world on the cross and made the way open for all men to be reconciled to the help, the care, the forgiveness, the blessing, the mercy of Heavenly Father, just as it was promised to Abram. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. See, Paul says the gospel was first preached to Abram, that it would come a day when the curse would be relieved, released, it was released when Jesus bore the curse, that men could come streaming to the goodness of God, no matter how horrible their background, how misfortunate their past behavior was, and receive a complete beginning be declared squeaky clean through the atoning yeah. sacrifice yeah. and be made new creations. So the problem that is, it's, no, it's not a problem, it's fantastic truth you're it's preaching, but because we use uh, jargon, yes. I, I want to unpack one word and, and I, I know that you're going to be able to answer it because it's the name of your ministry, but could you fully unpack uh, reconciliation? Because we've got the example of, of Israel. There, there's, there's an amazing you know, res restoration yes. there, but also in the human heart. Um, yeah. And when you use the word atonement, just unpack it for our viewers, because we have uh, some viewers who are not biblically literate. Very good. Reconciliation. Explain to us reconciliation. That Heavenly Father wants every single human being to come, come be reconciled, to be connected with his love, his care, his resource, his mercy. And that in spite of any ridiculous behavior that any of us may be, have been into, he laid the blame, the shame, the rap of all of that on Jesus. It's a done deal. It doesn't need to be repeated, but it needs to be discovered by every single one of us. Now, As the I done say, deal is, is the atonement. The atonement um, means which you mentioned that earlier, God so. put the blame of all the sin of all of us, Jew and Gentile, on his son Jesus. So that the blame, the shame, the guilt would be lifted from us because most people, when they think of God, they hide yeah. because they think, oh, he's expecting me to be perfect before I come near him. Well, there's none of us perfect. And he says to the wonderful prophet Isaiah, though your sins be as scarlet, they become as white as wool. Though they be as crimson, they shall be as snow. So no matter how heinous any of the messing that any of us have been into, when we come to Jesus, we're declared squeaky clean. Mm -hmm. This is justification. This is declared to be in right standing because in the atonement, God laid your blame and my blame on Jesus. When we put our faith in that, not only does he transfer our guilt onto Jesus on the cross, but when we put our faith in that, he transfers Jesus's right standing with God unto us and we become the blessed people of the Lord. Now, and and so this is wonderful, Paul. We've got just a couple of minutes left. 
um, the Jewish people have a day of atonement. Yes. Um, how, how does this message fit in with this day, this annual day of atonement that the Jewish people have? Well, they're aware <clears throat> that this, in the temple days, the sin was transferred, the guilt onto an animal, symbolic, of course, we know of Yeshua, of Jesus. The transfer of guilt, somebody has to bear our guilt, otherwise we'd have to bear it ourselves and we couldn't stand it. God laid on him, on every single human being, the guilt of us all. And Zechariah says, when they come back from all the nations, God will pour clean water upon them and they, on them, and they will look on him whom they have pierced. So the day is coming when the Jewish people will recognize that on the death of Jesus on the cross, God provided permanent atonement for them also. And as John the Baptist said, behold, the, the Lamb, Lamb of God. God. That's, That's our message. Profound That's the message of all Christians. So the idea of Catholic gospel or Protestant gospel or Orthodox gospel, it's ridiculous. There's one gospel, behold, the Lamb of God, he reconciles us to the Heavenly Father, restores us to his blessing, and he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. He saturates us, inundates us, floods us, and plants the, light, the, the nature of God within ordinary human beings to replace the Adamic, sinful, corrupt nature we were all born with. Wow. It's a wonderful deal. Now, the one, uh, yes, the, the wonderful thing is this is called The Late Show. So we're, we're just giving folks that, that final um, scripture for uh, them to sort of, I, I assume that you don't just watch through the night after The Late Show. <laughs> I hope we um, haven't We've had the wonderful sleep. music from Sergei. We, we ended up with Sergei on I Believe. Um, you know, to, I, I'm most concerned about the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm most concerned about those who, the, the, one, the one lamb or the one sheep that's missing, not the 99. So exactly. could, in this final minute, just give a message to those who, who may just have, I don't believe in accidents, God incidentally tuned into this show. Give them a message, uh, Paul, that they can take with them not only to their sleep, but um, through the rest of their no life. No matter what you've done in your past life, no matter what mess you're in right now, Heavenly Father loves you. And he's appointed Jesus to take the blame, the shame, the guilt. And he says, come back to me. I want to take care of you. I want to take care of you on earth. I want to take care of you throughout your life. I'll be a father to you. And when you put your faith that Jesus has paid for your sins, you can be reconciled, restored, to the love of your Heavenly Father. It'll come rushing into your heart and you'll have a brand new beginning. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you, Tim. That's such a blessing. And we, what better way to end a, a show or, or your day to just considering God's Word, um, thorough, solid, biblical teaching, and to have the music of Sergei Popov. So it's been a great honour to be with you both at this Thank you, Tim. Um, one it's a hour. privilege to be here. And God bless you and okay. be with you. Thank you, Tim. In his name.